Oh hi! Oh man, it's been a long time since I've said that. It's actually been a long time since I've said anything because I live alone in this tiny apartment and I've been in quarantine now for two months, I want to say. I figured quarantine would be a pretty good opportunity for me to lose some weight because I have full control over what I make and what I put in my body and also I am not peer pressured into drinking and eating. There's this narrative out there that has always annoyed me a little bit and that is people saying that they just magically lost weight just from moving to Japan. Which really pissed me off because I magically, not so magically, gained a lot of weight after moving to Japan. And I personally don't know a single person who moved to Japan and lost weight. Not a single one. I'm not saying this is Japan's fault at all. It's not like I stepped off the plane, I breathed Japanese air and it was full of calories and it made me fat. Nope, nothing like that. I made conscious decisions. Did my earring just fall off? How does that even happen? No, Japan didn't magically make me fat. Obviously, I put the food in my mouth and I ate it and that's how I gained weight. It's all on me. So I thought I would make a video about why I personally gained weight after moving to Japan, even though I was able to keep this weight off this whole time when I lived in Europe and in the United States. Maybe you're interested in moving to Japan, maybe you just want to know more about the food here, but either way, I have collected my five reasons why I gained weight living in Japan. Number one is the drinking culture. Something that is more common than bars here in Japan is actually something called izakayas. Izakayas are so much fun. It's kind of like a restaurant but also a bar where you sit down and usually have like an iPad or something where you can order food and drinks and everything is super cheap, super delicious, usually super fatty. It's honestly one of my favorite things. You go to the izakaya, you sit down, sometimes you have a private room. It depends how many people you are and it depends on which izakaya you go to, but usually they're very cheap, like torikizoku. Extremely cheap. You can get anything for like 299 yen. Oftentimes you have an iPad where you can just order food and then they bring it to the table. So you don't even have to interact. You can just kind of mindlessly order more and more and more. And all the pictures on the iPad look so appealing and you're kind of drunk. So you just keep ordering food and you keep eating. Or at least I do. And then they bring out the food and it's basically kind of like tapas. So it's small plates with something on it and it's meant to be shared. So you have a table full of little plates and you just keep grabbing from each plate depending on what you feel like. And a lot of the time, that's fried food. Generally the drinks cost between like 250 to 400 yen, depending on what you're getting. You can order drinks straight on the rocks or you can get mixed drinks. The mixed drinks contain a lot of sugar, but they're very delicious. And a lot of izakayas will do nomi hodai. And the cheapest nomi hodai that I've seen so far is 1,200 yen for like two hours. So that's about 12 US dollars, all you can drink for two hours. A lot of those drinks obviously don't have a lot of alcohol in them for that price. So you just keep drinking and drinking and drinking this, these whole two hours to get like your money's worth or whatever. Um, and a lot of those drinks are full of sugar as I said before. So not only do you get a thousand calories just from the drink, you also eat all this fried stuff at the side. And it's like the middle of the night, so not the best time to be stuffing yourself full of calories. But honestly a great experience. But yeah, living here, <laughs> you should kind of curb it down a little bit I guess. Number two is seasonal snacks. I am very, very guilty of falling trap to some good marketing and seasonal snacks is definitely one of those that gets me every year. During Sakura season, you have Sakura Kit Kat, Sakura Donuts, Sakura Chocolates, and there's just always something new in the stores and in the convenience stores. And the convenience stores are also a problem in itself because they're one, they're everywhere. And two, they're always open and three, Unlike the night shops in Western countries, the prices just stay the same during the whole day. So if you crave some chocolate at 2 a.m., you can just go and get it for the same price that you always get it. And it usually only takes like a five minute walk to even get there. So it's not really a big hurdle to go when you're having cravings. Number three is rice. I don't know how Japanese people digest rice and seemingly don't adopt any of the calories that they consume in rice but actually white plain rice has so many calories and it gets served with everything. Rice is one of those things where everybody just kind of likes it. It's really neutral in flavor, it's got a great texture, especially Japanese rice. 
is like a short corn and it gets really fat and sticky and it's just extremely satisfying to eat. But since it doesn't have a lot of flavor in itself, usually it gets served with something really fatty and flavorful, such as curry or sukiyaki, like really sweet soy sauces, uh, tempura, just whatever you want to put on top. So not only do you get like those empty calories a lot from just the rice, you also just like drowse it in sugar and then sauces and then like fat, which is delicious. It's just, I gain weight easily. <laughs> Number four is Japanese fast food. So when you're on a budget, then fast food obviously in any country is usually the cheapest thing to eat because it's like, it's fast, it's easy. They just make the same thing all day long and then they serve it to you. And in Japan, fast food is usually like donburi. So anything in a don, in a bowl. And again, there's a lot of rice in the bowl, first of all. And then second, usually there's not a single vegetable in sight. Some examples of Japanese fast food stores are Koko Ichibanya or Koko uh, Gogo Kare. So that's rice, curry, meat, usually not a vegetable in sight. If you get a salad, it's usually shredded cabbage. Then Matsunoya, uh, Sukiya, those are um, gyudon. So that's basically a rice bowl and then they put beef on top that they have cooked in a sweet soy sauce. Then we have things like katsuya. So that's katsudon which is a breaded pork cutlet on top of rice with sweet thick soy sauce. So again we have rice, breaded pork so that's fried and then a sweet soy sauce that's sugar. And all of this stuff is amazingly delicious and the best thing about it is usually only like 500 yen. Final reason number five is that Western cooking in Japan is quite expensive. I'm not really a great chef or anything. I never really do recipes. I just put together things that I like and then I have a meal. And in America and in the in Europe, I was pretty good at buying stuff that is good for you, that is affordable, that uh, doesn't make you gain weight necessarily, that's healthy. Um, so a lot of my staples would include things like bell peppers or cherry tomatoes, lean meats or Brussels sprouts, stuff that is really expensive in Japan because obviously this is not Europe or the US. The, the vegetables are different here, the meats are different here, people consume more fish, stuff like that. And I haven't been able to adapt to Japanese cuisine very well because I'm not a chef and I feel like Japanese cooking almost what do I know? Honestly, I like I said, I, I'm not good at cooking, but I almost feel like it's much easier to just throw things together and have like a Western meal than Japanese food preparation. Because a lot of the time that includes so many more ingredients and so much more effort, so much more chopping and everything. So a lot of the time I don't do it <laughs> and I can't do it. And um, yeah, I haven't been able to adapt to it at all. What I consider like healthy food that I used to eat regularly in Europe or in the US, here is more like a specialty thing, like a novelty, like a cool thing from Europe and it's usually like, oh, organic or all these crazy ingredients and then the price obviously is so much and coming from that background where it was normal to eat that, I just wouldn't pay that amount that is being asked here because I know or not, well, not really that I know that it can be cheaper because I guess in Japan it can't be cheaper, but I just don't see why I should pay that because I never had to pay in the past. So that makes me not want to pay it and just eat something else instead, right? Now there is one thing that is really healthy in Japan and you can find it anywhere at all and it's really healthy and that is sushi, which I don't like. I did not grow up eating raw things. Even steak, I can't even eat a medium rare steak, it has to be well done because I just can't get over the texture of raw things and that includes fish, meat, egg, whatever, just I can't eat raw things and that is a big problem here in Japan as you may know and I don't know, I want to get used to it but on the other hand it's just, you know, when you eat something you don't like and you just it doesn't feel good and you don't want to do it, right? So I don't and I haven't yet and I probably never will. And the result is that I gained around seven-ish kilos. 
Oh god. I know I should have stopped myself sooner, but I was just living it up. I came back to Japan, there was all this delicious food and all these conveniences and my big circle of friends and we would go drinking and everything was just so much fun. And a lot of the fun stuff just includes the food. So I let myself go and now I'm paying the price, but I'm going to make use of this quarantine to lose some weight and then hopefully <laughs> not gain it again. But I hope that gave you a little bit of an insight of what the food in Japan is like and why it is definitely possible to gain weight in Japan and that it's really actually not that easy to lose weight in Japan in my personal opinion. But I will make another video about things that I eat while dieting in Japan that are like affordable, healthy, easy to obtain and um, maybe some alternatives for when you do go out to eat. If that's something that you're interested in, just leave a comment down below. Anything at all you wanna see about food or dieting or anything like that. I did think about making a keto video, but keto seems scary and I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do it. <laughs> Stay sane in quarantine, we're almost there guys. Only a few more weeks to go, hopefully, and then hopefully there won't be a new way for anything. So wash your hands, stay healthy, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.